Hi, I'm Peter Chan, National Weather Service Program Lead of the Alaska Weather Show, and I have a very important change notice to share with you. The last TV broadcast of the Alaska Weather Show in the traditional sense over the airwaves will be on Saturday, June 30th. Starting on July 1st and thereafter, the National Weather Service will provide a modified web-based version of the program on a new YouTube channel. So that means you'll be able to find us. We'll be moving from at AKWX TV to at NWS Alaska, and you can go ahead and subscribe to that uh, channel now. There will be a public comment period from May 15th through July 30th, so please send your comments or concerns to nws.service-change comments at noaa.gov and if you have any other questions you may reach carrie.hazley at noaa.gov and donald.moore at noaa.gov thank you for your patience and understanding hello again and thanks for joining us for another edition thursday's edition of alaska weather up first uh, flood advisory still going on a couple of the smaller streams north of the tanana river here up over the eastern interior and also along the lower Yukon River Valley on out to the Delta to the coast, there are flood advisories there as well for minor flooding tonight and tomorrow right along the Yukon River there. Both areas that's mostly due to snow melt as uh, most of the Yukon rivers or the Yukon is open now as well as the um, all of the interior rivers. Otherwise satellite imagery showing uh, cold upper low up over the Chukchi Sea and um, another system coming into the western interior with good westerly flow coming out of the Russian Far East there and swinging right into the central interior bringing uh, rain and snow with it and that progressing slowly eastward increasing the clouds here over the eastern interior still some lingering snow or showers going on over the east side heaviest precipitation here to the west with this system and then that much lighter as you get down into the southwest interior some mid and high level clouds now spreading into Kodiak Island another mostly sunny day for the Pribilofs down to the eastern Aleutians Alaska Peninsula with that next system pushing rain into the Adak Atka area there, really not making a big push to the east too much, but eventually that'll push into the eastern Aleutians. And yet another low pressure area bringing more clouds and rain into the southeast coast here with uh, clouds all the way up into Lynn Canal Glacier Bay area to about Skagway. <clears throat> But not too bad over uh, Prince William Sound today in the Eastern Copper River Basin. And for tonight, or actually uh, rolling this through again, we'll see on the chart here, today, low pressure tracking eastward there, right along or just south of the Brooks Range, and a pretty good area of moisture, rain and rain and snow coming into the uh, interior here, and some showers over the mountainous terrain, South Central Alaska, Kenai Peninsula, Talkeetnas, and the uh, higher elevations of the Copper River Basin, especially along the Alaska Range there, drier to the south along the coast, rain coming northward with this system. You can see not much of a gradient associated with it. So winds on the light side there, really not much of a factor. And just uh, light rain coming up with this system with the main low center still well to the southeast there. And then here's this higher pressure area that uh, brought the mostly clear skies again to the, or was just stark clear sunshine the entire day here for the Pribilof Islands right on down to the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula. Again, some clouds starting to spill into the uh, Unmak Island area and then you pick up the rain and uh, a little more breezy conditions over Adak and Atka. And then that changes the showers behind that front. <clears throat> And we'll see tonight that system continues to push eastward here, so rain will push into the eastern Aleutians later this evening, continuing out through tonight with uh, 
still staying uh, west of the Alaska Peninsula area, clear skies now, kind of retreating to the east and becoming a little more uh, smaller in size, but keeping it pretty nice here for the uh, southwest coast into the Alaska Peninsula. A uh, weak cold front here bringing some snow showers into the Yukon Delta and up the lower and mid Yukon River Valley areas. Rain and snow showers in advance of that system. Areas of light snow for the Koba Koyakuk Valleys out to the Noatak Valley, northwest coast. Um, with the heaviest snowfall amounts over the Brooks Range, lighter for the North Slope and the Arctic Coast. And then that system spreads uh, rain from the Queen Charlotte Islands all the way up into the Panhandle. And for tomorrow, that front kind of hangs up and just dies in place there. So I'll keep periods of diminishing light rain over the central and southern southeast coast. Cloudy, cool with showers to the north. Southeast interior, cloudy, cool, mostly cloudy and cool again with uh, showers, uh, especially in the afternoon over the mountainous terrain. And that'll extend on up into the upper Tanaw Valley and 40 mile country, but nothing uh, heavy precipitation wise expected there. And still mixed precipitation, <clears throat> depending on the time of day and your elevation there for the Brooks Range North Slope and Arctic Coast. And uh, kind of improving a little bit here over the Western interior. Should be a little less precipitation tomorrow than what you saw today here. And uh, maybe some clearing, best chance of clearing though over the uh, Cusquam Delta into Bristol Bay, the Alaska Peninsula. It looks mostly sunny for those locations for tomorrow. And uh, a little cloudy, variable clouds for the Kodiak Island area, but dry with light winds, rain, gusty winds winds pushing into the Alaska Peninsula but uh, staying west of say Point Hope there and uh, kind of Port Hyden right on the cutoff area there and some light rain possibly moving into Nunavak Island but uh, westerly flow clouds rain and showers covering much of the Bering Sea here with uh, pretty low flying conditions in the IFR zone uh, probably covering a good portion of the Bering Sea through tomorrow and for Saturday, maybe some improvement out here, but still a lot of clouds. Maybe some sun breaks with dry conditions. Definitely light winds for the central Aleutians. Weak low travels to the eastern Aleutians there. Keeps it wet from Unalaska, Dutch Harbor, Nikolski, right up the Alaska Peninsula here with this uh, weakening front right through this area. Could spread some showers into Kodiak Island. Another front dropping in. Another weak front brings rain and snow uh, into the north and western areas there, kind of linking up the two areas of moisture here over the southwest interior. So it looks like a pretty uh, widespread area of light precipitation, cloudy, cool conditions. Western part of the state and uh, variably cloudy to mostly cloudy and uh, still not all that warm here over the eastern interior. Maybe best chance of sun, southeastern Copper River Basin. Could see a few showers over the mountains of the Kenai Peninsula in the afternoon, as well as the eastern Alaska, Alaska Range. And then a trough looks uh, pretty unsettled and damp for the southeast coast with high pressure just off the coast, at least through Saturday. Low temperatures down that way tonight in the 40s. Mid 30s Copper River Basin, 40 to 45 South Central Alaska, 35 to 40 in the Kuskokwim Valley, near 40 for Bristol Bay. Highs tomorrow, 55 to 60 for Bristol Bay, lower 50s for the Kuskokwim Valley, and lower 50s here, South Central Alaska, Kenai Peninsula, and uh, 50 to 55 for the Southeast Interior, and for the Panhandle, highs in the 50s, a little bit warmer up here to the north. And for the lows, again, in the 40s for the southeast coast, 40 to 45 south central Alaska, 35 to 40 for the Copper River Basin, 40s, lower 40s elsewhere. And then for the highs on Sunday, a little warmer, Copper River Basins, finally some 60s coming back, lower 60s there, and mid 50s south central Alaska, <coughs> excuse me, near 50 for Kodiak Island and 50s for <laughs> Bristol Bay, a lot of pollen in this room. And for the uh, Panhandle, 50s to mid 60s, Skagway Haynes, a little bit warmer there, looking at the mid 60s. And up to the north, lows tonight, still uh, 20s over a good portion of the state, especially out here to the west and to the north, milder to the east. And for the highs tomorrow, 50s to near 60, warmest toward Eagle, and cooler back to the west. <laughs> you can see the North Slope down Arctic Coast finally edging above the frost point there. 
and for the lows Saturday morning in the 20s north of the Brooks Range and 30s to the south, upper 20s into the Seward Peninsula with highs in the uh, 60s here. So a little bit of a warming trend starting to show up over the east side there, 60, 65 or so. Uh, finally getting back above 60 in the Fairbanks area and upper 40s for the eastern Arctic coast, upper 30s for St. Lawrence Island. For the southwest coast, lows in the 30s tonight and for the tomorrow, highs in the 40s, followed by lows in the 30s. Hi, I'm Peter Chan, National Weather Service Program Lead of the Alaska Weather Show, and I have a very important change notice to share with you. The last TV broadcast of the Alaska Weather Show in the traditional sense over the airwaves will be on Saturday, June 30th. Starting on July 1st and thereafter, the National Weather Service will provide a modified web-based version of the program on a new YouTube channel. So that means you'll be able to find us. We'll be moving from at AKWX TV to at NWS Alaska, and you can go ahead and subscribe to that uh, channel now. There will be a public comment period from May 15th through July 30th, so please send your comments or concerns to nws.service-change-comments at noaa.gov. And if you have any other questions, you may reach carrie.hazley at noaa.gov and donald.moore at noaa.gov. Thank you for your patience and understanding. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. IFR covers a good portion of the western Bering Sea here. Uh, still pretty good VFR for the Permalofts down across the eastern Aleutians into Bristol Bay. Northern Bering Sea, a fair amount of IFR, but that all staying south of St. Lawrence Island. And uh, VFR here through the Bering Strait, Seward Peninsula. And uh, inland, IFR there, Point Hope, Cape Lisbourne, and along the Brooks Range. Some more IFR here along the central and western Alaska Range. Kodiak Island, VFR, as well as Eastern Interior here down to the Eastern North Gulf Coast. Mostly VFR for the Panhandle. Some areas of marginal VFR included. And for the afternoon, good VFR for the Panhandle. Most of interior Alaska as well. Maybe some lingering marginal VFR in areas of the Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound up into the uh, Manuska Valley, Talkeetan is the Alaska Range. Good VFR in the in North central interior here. Still some IFR there along the northwest coast and marginal VFR over areas of the Arctic coast, North Slope. And a lot of VFR holds out here south of St. Lawrence Island. And now moving into the Permalos by tomorrow afternoon, eastward here to uh, the far western Alaska Peninsula. Saturday morning, IFR now up across St. Lawrence Island to the Bering Strait, covering just about all the Bering Sea now, and eastward to uh, Nunavak Island, Alaska Peninsula, mostly IFR, solid IFR for the entire Aleutian chain, out to the Commodorskis, and uh, inland though, mostly VFR for the morning hours, still some marginal VFR possible here in South Central Alaska, and Kodiak Island though, mostly VFR, the panhandle looking good vfr flying conditions there and that holds right through the afternoon saturday there for the panhandle interior alaska same thing good vfr all the way north to the arctic coast then conditions uh, deteriorate as you head out to the bering sea coast with the ifr showing up over the bering strait and down across uh, nunavak island right along the yukon cuscombe delta coastline mostly the cuscombe delta coast uh, but staying off the coast for the most part marginal vfr coming inland a little bit and ifr southern kodiak island now southern Alaska Peninsula, solid IFR for uh, the Bering Sea and all of the Aleutians. Passes. Anatuva, Connecticut, both marginal VFR for the day on Friday. Lake Clark and Merrill, VFR. <laughs> Excuse me. Rainy VFR. Windy, marginal VFR. Isabel, marginal VFR. Mintesta, VFR. And Tanita, looking, uh, mar looking marginally marginal tomorrow for Tanita at times, VFR otherwise. And for Portage, marginal VFR. Chilkoot and White, VFR. 
freezing levels. Uh, still uh, upper level, cold upper low here. Uh, centered actually still up over the Chukchi Sea, but a lot of uh, chilly air in over the west and northwest interior. Uh, and then a little bit warmer here over the uh, Bering Sea, 8,000 feet for the eastern Aleutians and falling back again out to the west to about 4,000 feet. And 2,000 feet in across the Copper River Basin, 2 to 3,000 feet here across much of southern Alaska. And from there, going to uh, icing several areas, possible areas, a couple of disturbances tracking eastward here across the uh, North Slope Arctic Coast from the Chukchi Sea. This area here, probably the more significant area of icing of the two there, but just isolated moderate uh, in areas possible in these zones up here to the north and possible mixed icing there over the panhandle at times, uh, really nothing all that serious there. And this really weak looking system here will produce an area of really weak, light to isolated moderate rime icing with it. Probably won't be anything in the way of moderate, mostly light from the Alaska Peninsula up to the Pribilof Islands. And the jet stream, again, that cold upper low there up over the Chukchi Sea and Arctic Ocean. Westerly flow coming around that, uh, about 70 knots into the west coast, taking a turn to the southeast here, across uh, Kodiak Island. South, southeast, 80 knots over the southern panhandle. Southerly is about 75 there over the eastern Aleutians. 9,000 feet, uh, 40 to 55 knot winds over the eastern interior. 45 knot winds here on the northern quadrant of this low there, just north of the eastern Aleutians. And 3,000 feet, pretty light winds here over the interior, but 40 knots along the northwest coast and far eastern Arctic coast. And for turbulence, uh, look for isolated moderate turbulence, Alaska Peninsula, most of the Aleutians, as well as the southern panhandle, northwest coast, and Bering Strait areas. Hola Venusians, I'm Trace. Venus is the second planet from our sun. It's similar in size to Earth. It's got an oppressive, toxic atmosphere of death. What a beauty. And you can see it right now. Hit the skies any evening this week or next and look toward the sunset. There will be a bright yellowish dot chasing our star as our planet rotates. That, my friends, is Venus. Venus is easy to see now because it's reached eastern elongation, the part of its orbit when it's furthest from the sun from our vantage point. After dark, you can see Castor and Pollux to the right and Mars to the left. Over the next weeks, Venus and Mars are going to get closer and closer to each other. On June 21st, they'll form a triangle with the crescent moon bathed in Earth shine. Oh, what a sight. Venus is sometimes called the evening star, which makes sense, though at its current magnitude, Venus is three times brighter than the brightest star, Sirius. Keep looking up. to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and we have a special guest in the studio today. We welcome Amanda Turborg of the Aviation Weather Center. Thanks for joining us, Amanda. Yeah, thank you for having me. Amanda's flown in all the way from Kansas City, and uh, for those of you that don't know, the Aviation Weather Center serves the lower 48 uh, for aviators, just as the Alaska Aviation Weather Unit here in Anchorage serves all of Alaska. So I kind of wonder, what's the Aviation Weather Center in Kansas City doing to help out Alaska, Amanda? Yeah, you know, we do a lot of collaboration work with our sister station up here. Uh, lately, we've been doing a lot of work, especially in the satellite meteorology. Okay. Um, in particular, we have been looking at ways to identify, better identify icing conditions in oh. clouds, um, which is a big deal up here because Very. as I've come to find out, even though I'm not from here, um, you guys have a lot of pilots here. You have a lot of pilots. In yeah. fact, it's, when you say you can't get there from here, that's how you get there. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so uh, with icing potential then, uh, what, what's Kansas City working on? Uh, well, we are working on something that will help us again identify the icing in the clouds. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want ice on your aircraft. No. Uh, not only does it add a whole bunch of extra weight to your airframe when it uh, attaches to mm -hmm. the wings and the nose cone, but it can also mess with your aerodynamics. Right. Um, and in the most serious conditions, that can mess with it enough that you can actually crash. It changes the shape of the wing and that makes it sometimes impossible to fly, right? It does, yeah. So we want to figure out a way to forecast, better forecast for that. Makes sense. Uh, now this particular image is over Alaska. Mm -hmm. um, the colors here are a little goofy. It doesn't look like your run-of-the-mill satellite image. Okay. Um, but the red is where you have liquid clouds and the blue is ice, but again, it really doesn't tell you a lot where you have icing conditions mm -hmm. in that cloud. Uh, because in those clouds, there's little droplets, and they're cold, and they're actually below freezing, but they're still liquid, and wow. that makes them sticky. Okay. So when an aircraft flies through there, 
um, those droplets are sticking to the aircraft and it can mm -hmm. happen amazingly fast. Right. And so that's what we're trying to find. Um, and there is a product called the Aircraft Flight Icing Threat that mm -hmm. does this. Um, and it's basically looking at the temperature of the cloud mm -hmm. and it's also looking at the size of the droplets to okay. identify a probability and intensity of those icing conditions. Okay. Um, and if you Flip to the next image. Mm -hmm. um, this is a case from Juneau, Alaska, um, it, where this probably wouldn't have been the most, the best day to fly around Juneau. Okay. Um, now there was an area of moisture that pushed south from the southwest mm -hmm. up along the coast that pushed in a stratus layer, and in the stratus layer there was a lot of those super cool liquid drops or a lot of stickiness. Okay. Um, and so the flight icing threat was able to, in the pinks and the reds there, was mm -hmm. able to identify where that icing was. Um, now this is really cool, you know, it's, it's really cool to be able to identify that sure. there is, you know, of course, caveats to every product. Um, much as we wish it would, it would happen, sun doesn't shine all the time, unless, I guess, if you live in northern Alaska during the summertime. Right, right. Um, but we need that sun to be able to bounce off those clouds and to be able to see where those super cool drops are. Okay, so it's a daytime only tool. It is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right now, of mm -hmm. course, you know, we're in the era, era of advanced satellite technology and there right. is a satellite that can actually use moonlight to see clouds. Yes. and so. Sometime in the future, we hope to be able to do that. Okay. Um, another thing that is a bit of a challenge is multiple layers of clouds. Mm -hmm. You know, you can only see so far through a thick cloud. Okay. And if it's thick enough, sometimes you can't see a layer of icing that's below there. Right, right. Um, but even besides those caveats, it does, this product has a lot of potential to help out Alaskan aviators here. Well, it sounds like a really big deal and, and something that uh, forecasters at the Alaska Aviation Weather Unit could use probably on a daily basis and especially in the middle of a really big storm. Yeah, I would think so. Do you have a really good success story in the lower 48 using this tool? Um, you know, this is a, it's a fairly new product and so we're still evaluating it, but yeah, we've had a, a lot of cases um, where we have seen that it does, it does tend to capture those icing conditions. Okay, very good. Well, Amanda, thanks so much for sharing some of the very interesting satellite imagery and the tools that you're using there at the Aviation Weather Center in Kansas City with us here in Alaska. Uh, people can probably find some of this information online, right? Yeah, um, here is a website here. It's a page from NASA Langley and they have mm -hmm. this imagery as well as a bunch of other satellite imagery that you can take a look at. Okay, great. And I'm sure our friends at the Alaska Aviation Weather Center and the unit will be uh, using that in the, in the coming months there with your training and your help there to learn more about uh, that tool to help Alaska aviators any day of the year. That's wonderful stuff. So thanks again for joining us, Amanda. And, uh, we welcome you to view any of our Alaska weather facts on YouTube anytime at the address below, and we'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. And wind forecasts here along the south coast. Uh, East Southeast 20 knots for Friday and East Southeast 15 knots for the North Coast. Light and variable winds or for the uh, North Coast, Central Coast, East Southeast 15, North Coast winds light and variable. Lincoln Canal North winds tomorrow at 15, Southeast 10 for Stevens Passage and Clarence Strait winds out of the Southeast at 20 knots with four foot seas. And for Saturday, south coast, east, southeast, at least 10 to 20 knots. Northwest winds, 10 to 15 knots for the north coast. And southeast at 10 knots for Lincoln Canal, Glacier Bay, and Stevens Passage. Seas only two feet in these areas. And southeast at 15 for Clarence Strait. Prince William Sound, variable winds, 10 knots, seas two feet. North Gulf Coast, light variable winds at 10 knots, seas three to four feet. And variable winds at 20 knots for the Barren Islands. And Kamishak Bay, southeast winds at 20 knots. Small craft advisories are Cook Inlet, south winds 25 knots with seven foot seas. And for the day on Saturday, Cook Inlet, variable winds at 10 knots, seas down to two feet. Small craft advisories over Kamishak Bay for southeast winds at 25 knots and southeast winds 20 knots for the Barren Islands. And for the western North Gulf Coast, winds east at 15. And the eastern North Gulf Coast, light variable winds at 10 knots. Prince William Sound, winds light and variable at 10 knots with two foot seas. <clears throat> Kodiak Island, south to southwest winds at 15 knots, seas three feet. Southeast winds, 20 knots for the Alaska Peninsula. And Bristol Bay looking at south winds at about 10 knots. 
for Saturday. Alaska Peninsula, east southeast winds 15 to 25 knots. Seas running in three to six feet out here, not too bad. And or, uh, Bristol Bay, southeast of 25. And Kodiak Island, east southeast winds at 20 knots. And for the uh, eastern Aleutian, southeast winds 25 to 30 knots for the day tomorrow with uh, four to eight foot seas. And for Adak and Atka, Southwest winds 25 knots and for the western Aleutians west winds mostly 20 to 25 knots with seas 6 to 9 feet. For Saturday for the western Aleutians uh, east and northeast winds 25 to 30 knots. Adak and Atka a little bit lighter southwest to 20 4 to 7 foot seas there for the eastern Aleutians. South to southeast winds at 15 to 20 knots with three to seven foot seas. And for the uh, southwest coast, we've got uh, south winds 10 to 15 knots in the forecast for Friday. Southeast 15, Norton Sound, St. Lawrence Island, Primloff, southeast 25, and St. Matthew Island. Winds mostly east at 20 knots with six foot seas. Then for Saturday, for the Primloffs, light east winds at about 15 knots. And for the Cuscoquim Delta Coast, east to 25, Yukon Delta Coast, southeast to 20, St. Matthew Island looking at north winds at about 20 knots, <clears throat> and east 15 to 20 knot winds for Saturday, Norton Sound, St. Lawrence Island. And for uh, Friday for the Chuck CC, south winds 20 to 25 knots, 25 knot subtleties also for the western Arctic coast. Central coast, lighter winds there, east of 15. And then the eastern Boulevard Sea coast, east winds 20 to 25. And for Saturday, for the eastern Boulevard Sea coast, southeast winds at about 15 knots, becoming more southerly there for the central coast. And for the western Arctic coast, southwest winds 20 knots mm -hmm. and 10 to 15 knots southwest winds here for the Chukchi Sea. <clears throat> For tonight, periods of snow here over the northern part of the state with a couple of lows, one tracking eastward here, eastern Brooks Range, another front approaching the Arctic coast. Rain moving eastward here into the eastern Aleutians tonight with southeast winds and about uh, 25 to 30 knots tonight. Lighter winds, but still a lot of clouds and showers behind that front for the remainder of the Aleutians covering much of the Bering Sea. Rain and snow showers here, uh, south central Alaska into the Copper River Basin and rain over the central and southern panhandle tomorrow continues with that uh, front just kind of washing out in place there, keeping it uh, damp, cool, and unsettled for the panhandle and showery for south central Alaska and the southeast interior. And uh, rain and snow showers up here to the north, rain advancing eastward to the Copper River or to the Alaska Peninsula. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.